thanks for being here to listen about small targets. Small targets is a very important thing in the radar world today. Actually, when my children ask me what I do at work, I tell them that I work with finding needles in the haystack. And why is that so hard these days? Radars, why are they even complicated after 70 years in operation? Radars came around the Second World War. We continue to build them to get greater distances, smaller sizes. Things went pretty well. But then our opponents realized how good the radars were and they started to work against us. And that's, I think, for all of us here at IDEX. It's exciting to be in a business where your other people actually try to make your technology not work. And one way of doing that, that's what we call stealth. And to many of you, Stealth means invisible. But the news for today is that uh, there's actually only one invisible product in the world. One invisible product in the world. I think many of you know which one that is. You have read about it. It is Harry Potter's cloak of invisibility. That is the only invisible product in the world. All other things can be seen. And stealth does not mean invisible. It means that you become smaller in the eyes of a radar. That means that uh, stealth makes you look different from different angles. Take this missile, seven meters wide, one meter in one dimension, seven square meters. That's a huge thing. But from dis different angles, where you look at this missile, it can have different sizes. From some angles, it's the size of a basketball. From yet other, tougher angles, it's the size of a baseball. And then, at the most tough angles, this huge missile is the size of a golf ball. And imagine trying to find this one, traveling at high speeds at a very long distance. That is hard. And that's why you need modern radars. Radars were built and constructed quite some years ago, typically for, for looking out in the longer range. They were very fit towards the targets of those days. So you had a detection range, very well fitting. The time you need to get the distance to whether it's scrambling your fighters or guiding missiles. Things worked well. But then stealth came, and although not invisible, they look clearly smaller. You remember? That means that the detection range you get with your existing radars is way shorter than the distance you need to, to intercept them. And that is what leading you to needing today's radars. We are today in an arms race of stealthy targets and more and more advanced radars. That is what is going on and what will continue to go on. And that's what we are working with at SOL. So if we handle the stealth well then, what other problems are there? Well, one big thing you hear a lot about here at the fair, that's drones or UAVs. They are not that stealthy in that sense, but uh, they are small, they are flying low and flying slow. And the problem there is not to see them. We have strong enough glasses to see them. The problem is that there are other things also flying low, slowly, and they are small. And that's birds. So birds is becoming a problem. We see too much, we see all the birds. In a typical average country, if you're 10 kilometers from your radar, you have more than a thousand birds in the air. Imagine being a radar operator, sitting there, and you have a hundred targets on your screen, and 99 of them are birds. That's what a modern radar sees. Before we could just filter those type of targets away, but we cannot do that any longer with the drones. So now, if we have the glasses, they are strong, we have to get better brains. So now we are working, and we have done that at SOB, in the data processing capacity, we can, through the movement and the behavior of birds versus man-made targets, we separate out the birds. The operator does not have to see them. And that is what we have done with SOB. We have increased the brains of the radar. Having then solve the stealth part, the, the uh, birds part, and that problem, you still have another problem, and that is what I mentioned at the start. Your opponents are trying to make life difficult for you. They are trying to jam you. If you have a good radar, they try to jam the radar. 
And they do that by throwing a lot of energy in microwaves against you. And then you have to make your radar sharp enough to send a very, very thin signal with a strong power in the middle of that jamming to reach the target and bounce back and we can still see it. And if you are to compare that in some way to the modern or, or, or the normal world, I would say listening and finding an object in that jammed environment, that's like being at the runway of an airport when an airliner is taking off and at the same time you're listening to those motors, you can hear the sound of a bumblebee. I doubt that any one of us here could hear a bumblebee in the midst of an airliner taking off, but that is what our radar can do in the middle of a jam situation. That is how it feels for a radar. So, uh, to sum up a little bit uh, this, I've spoken about the stealth threat and how that leads to this arms race of more modern radars being needed. The need to get the birds there, separate them out so you don't have to see them when you're chasing drones and also that you have these days to stand up to a jammed environment. So, I hope you have learned a little bit today and uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you.